So I've popped down here to the beautiful Devon countryside and I'm going to find out exactly why it is that cows might need Wi-Fi. So here at eFix, we're used to meeting domestic, industrial and commercial electricians, but here we've stepped outside that zone and we're looking at an agricultural environment. So, Tom, how are you helping agricultural residents with the big problems of living in the countryside? I think we predominantly specialise in three areas, which is uh, security, then we've got faster internet and then uh, livestock monitoring and animal welfare, which again, utilising a camera to, yeah. to achieve that. Brilliant. So we've got security, connectivity and livestock welfare. A couple of those things are items that I didn't realise were really a big problem out here in the countryside. So we're going to go off around this job, have a look at some of the different areas and explain why it's a problem and how you're helping to solve that. Let's go. So Tom, I can see a security camera over to my left there. I wouldn't have thought that security would be such a big issue out here in the middle of nowhere, the sleepy countryside. A big problem on farms is that ultimately you have a farm in the middle of you know, the countryside and you can come at it from any direction. Yeah. And in this instance here, we're looking at two big areas where people can enter the farm. So that camera specifically is looking over the workshop door, which is over there. They store the quad bike in there every night and it's got all their power tools. But it's actually serving, it's actually doing two things. It's looking over the workshop and it's covering that entrance. I would imagine it's, it's not always the case that the farmer lives here at the site where the buildings are. So is it possible to view that kind of remotely from, from his own home or her own home as some distance away? Yeah, so this, uh, this farm specifically, they, they don't live here. So they live at another farm, which is five minutes away. Yeah. Um, all of the cameras are set up to be viewed remotely on a, using a smartphone app. And of course, it's, it's not just hardware, tractors and quad bikes that could get stolen. You said earlier, one of the major things that goes missing is diesel. Right? Yeah. That's a big problem, obviously, with the increased cost of things. Diesel's always been one of those items that gets stolen a lot. So mm. we have a lot of farms where we have cameras specifically looking over a diesel tank. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, especially in light of everything that's going on currently, yeah. um, it's a massive problem now. Wow. So yeah, so security, an absolutely critical part to keeping farmers and their livestock and their hardware safe in the countryside. So we were just outside looking at that fantastic camera offering the visual surveillance, but we've also got some more kind of traditional solutions in here uh, in this rather, let's call it agricultural looking workshop that we're in. So uh, tell us a little bit about the intruder alarm in here. Yeah, so this is very common for us. So every farm has a workshop yeah. and it'll be a place where they keep power tools, um, quad bike generators, um, sprayers, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's very common that we'll install an intruder alarm. Someone yeah. then persists past the camera, uh, breaks in, then it's going to set off the alarm. Yeah. And it will not only set off an outdoor siren, but it will also set off a siren on the smartphone app. Uh, they're going to get a big siren go off on their phone and it's a horrible siren. Right. You won't sleep for it. <laughs> but what, what they can also do is then check the smartphone app um, for the cameras yeah. and then make sure that it wasn't actually just a farm worker that you know didn't get the key the, the number in in time. Yeah, absolutely, oh, that's really interesting. So we've got that kind of traditional elements with the, the PIRs and the door contacts and all that kind mm. of stuff, but then taking it to the smart level yeah. by having that link to the mobile device for when you're not actually physically living on the site, which Correct. is fairly common. We've actually got this phrase that we've coined, which is uh, self-monitoring. Self-monitoring means that actually you've got it all on your phone, so yeah. you can view the cameras remotely okay. uh, and or the intruder alarm remotely. Yeah, brilliant. Now, I'm just gonna say one of the things that our viewers love to do, Tom, is they love to look at what's in the background and have a little judge of the electrical installation. Right, if we ever go to a farm where we need power in a shed, yep. uh, we'll, all, we'll either get the farmer to use their own electrician or we'll use the electrician that we work with. Uh, we are you know, we're data security yep. specialists uh, and, and with this keypad specifically, uh, Ajax is wireless. Yeah. So there's actually no cables that run to those and they've oh, got a, a battery life, life of a few years. Excellent, so if you're thinking of commenting on the state of the conduit here, okay, it's not Tom. Not name. ours, no. <laughs> So we've talked about that first issue of security out in the countryside, but now we're going to talk about connectivity. What's the big issue with internet connections in a, a rural environment like this one, Tom? It's purely down speed. Yeah. So with this farm specifically, like a lot of our farms, they tend to be at the end of a, an existing BT infrastructure, which is your copper copper line. So the speeds aren't up to it. Uh, we came out and surveyed on a 4G connection. Okay. So what we do is we're, we're ultimately re replicating what your phone will do. Yeah. So your phone has a little antenna in it, which right. then connects to a 4G connection to a mast. You see them sometimes at the side of the roads. Okay. Um, and what we do is we put up a high gain directional 4G antenna. Which is that big white box. Exactly. Yeah. And that allows us to connect specifically to a mast in a certain direction. Right. Okay. So let's not make the mistake of thinking we're adding to or strengthening the 4G network here. No. We're not putting up mobile phone network masts. What we're doing here is we're accessing the mobile phone network Correct. via that box. Yeah. Excellent. And that brings internet into the property and then of course we've got some challenges haven't we of trying to get that 
uh, to the rest of the properties around here, the remote buildings and the outbuildings. Have you had to dig up a load of floors and install a load of cables for that, a load of Cat 5s all over the place? No, 10 years ago plus, if we were doing this, it would have been cables everywhere. Yeah. Uh, now what we can actually do is install point-to-point -point wireless links. Yeah. So that wireless link- that's the, that's the little white box. Yeah, underneath exactly. The big one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that will send our connectivity to remote buildings. Okay. Um, believe it or not, that one there will do up to about 1.5 to two miles. Wow. And we can send speeds up to about 90 megabytes through it, plus cameras and connectivity for, for things like intruder alarms as well. That's absolutely excellent, isn't it? So we're able to get that internet all over the place by means of these clever boxes and all done pretty much wirelessly. That's fantastic. So Tom, we're now looking at the third main area of your business that you focus on, and it's got something to do with what's above our head here. So what's that up there and what's it got to do with those lovely animals over there? <laughs> um, so this is a PTZ camera or pan tilt zoom. Yeah. Uh, we actually call it our livestock camera. Okay. Um, and we tend to install that in, in fact, mainly environments like this where you've got a carving area yeah. um, where the farmer will actually look at the camera remotely mm -hmm. and actually see if any of the cows are carving or ultimately if, if an incident has occurred mm -hmm. and then the camera as you probably see here the camera is actually set to move oh, okay. so every 15 seconds this camera is moving I think between three locations yep. so it's going between the carving area and the cubicles okay. uh, the reason we get it to look over the cubicles is purely animal welfare so if one of the cows slips falls um, or just any kind of events, they can look at the camera and then make a decision whether or not to come out. That's absolutely brilliant. And of course, that's going to be incredibly helpful during the, that time of year when you've got either cows calving mm. or sheep lambing or, or anything like that that's going on where they actually need pretty quick care. But obviously, it's very difficult to be here on site all the time. Yeah, it's why why we do call it the livestock camera is because it can be used you know we've got these cameras installed in uh, lambing sheds mm -hmm. like you said carving foaling mm -hmm. horses um, and especially in those environments you need to be able to see if something's going on and get here pretty quick yeah. you know traditionally without that camera farmers would have to rely on just coming out and checking you know two three four in the morning whatever time it is yeah. through the rain yeah. This farm specifically, as we've said already, they don't live here. Yeah. So they would have to commit to coming out, checking, and there's probably nothing going on, and they have to go back to bed. Yeah. Whereas now they can get their phone out, have a quick look, nothing's going on, back to sleep. Yeah. Um, and if something is going on, they can then come out. That's brilliant. So they've got the exact same situation. They can observe what's going on in this building, mm. care for the animals, come down if they needed to, but they can do all that from the comfort of their own home, just down the road. Down. Exactly. That's brilliant. You know, I think that Tom has created a really remarkable business here and he's built it based on the juxtaposition between one of the oldest industries known to mankind and some of the most modern technology that we've got available to us. And I think that makes him worthy of winning a Data and Security Award as sponsored by Penelcom. If you think you or your business are worthy of winning an eFix Award, then stay tuned for when we open nominations later in the year. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please check out these ones here. Thank you very much for watching.